Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our Facebook Live session. My name is Demelza Campbell and I work in the FBI's Human Resource Division. I am joined today by Kelly Holland, a special agent and unit chief in charge of our training management unit at Quantico, the real Quantico I might add, which means she oversees all the new agents in training. Uh, we're here today to talk about the great careers women can have as FBI agents and maybe address some of the common concerns and misconceptions about being a woman in the special agent position. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I am doing peachy. How are you? Fantastic. <laughs> awesome. Listen, Kelly, can you do us a favor? Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I've been with the Bureau for 14 years. Started off my career, um, that is right out of the academy. Went to Cincinnati, stayed there for a couple years. Went up to Anchorage, Alaska, where I spent the bulk of my field office time, um, a little over six years. Transitioned down to the DC area, and currently I am the unit chief of the training management unit down at FBI Academy. What that means is that any of the special agents that come through the training academy, they report to me and my team, and we evaluate them, mentor them, and um, evaluate them while they're with us. Okay, so. Uh, let's jump right in, right? I think that a lot of people in the audience might be interested in finding out um, how did you find out about the special agent position? Exactly what was it that pulled you to decide, hey, I want to be a special agent with the FBI? Like a lot of us in the organization, being an FBI agent has been a lifelong dream. I wanted to either become an FBI agent or become an astronaut. I wanted to do something elite and do something for my country and um, the astronaut route didn't work for me, so then I started to pursue the FBI special agent route. Um, once I got my basic work experience that I needed, I started doing some research, uh, spoke to a couple FBI agents to see what the job was about, and I put in my application, a couple years later, I was a special agent. And so with that, uh, I think that sometimes as you're pursuing the special agent position, there might be some concerns. Were there any concerns that you had uh, before beginning the special agent process that uh, maybe some of our audience has that you can speak to? Oh, absolutely. I had two um, specifically. One, having a family as an FBI special agent, um, and those were questions that I did ask of the two agents that I spoke to before I put on my application. And uh, I have to say that what they said does hold true, and that is it's extremely doable. It takes coordination, it takes effort, um, you have to fight to get that personal time with your family, but it is completely doable. Can have a family and be a special agent. And then the second was, am I good enough? Mm -hmm. When I get to the academy, am I going to be as good as my, my, my classmates and am I going to make it through? And you just have to have that mindset. The application process is extremely rigorous. It's that way for a reason. And if they think I'm good enough to, to get to the academy, I am not going to fail. Right. So even with that, we, I think, as human beings, we all have those doubts. We all have those moments. Absolutely. Are we good enough? Were there any differences in terms of the requirements for you when you went through NAT or, excuse me, New Agents Training uh, that you experienced? Were there any differences? Um, if you mean differences between men and women, mm. um, the only difference I noticed was in the physical requirements. And when I say that, very specifically only one, and that is the physical fitness test that we have to take. We have to do a different number of push-ups than the men do. Um, our times for the runs are slightly different. Um, different sit-ups, that kind of thing. But outside of you know the techniques and defensive tactics that we have to do, or clearing rooms in the tactical side of the room, or um, house, or doing firearms, academics, everything was the same. Okay, awesome. So. Talking about the process, maybe talking about the process a little bit more, what was the one thing that you wish that you knew then that you know now? Like, God, it would have been awesome to know this at that point. Um, don't take yourself too seriously. Develop a sense of humor. If you don't have one, find it before you get to the academy. You're going to mess up. Um, we mess up. All of us do. We're human. You're not perfect. So. Make sure that you're able to laugh at yourself. That's really important, not only when we, when we make mistakes, whether it's in training or in the field office, but also um, the fact that we deal with very stressful situations mm -hmm. in our job. So it's really good to balance that with having a healthy sense of humor. So for those of you just joining us, thanks for time, uh, excuse me, turning in. I'm Demelza from the FBI's Human Resources Division, and today we're talking with Special Agent Kelly Holland about what it's like being a female special agent. 
Remember to go to FBIjobs.gov to apply for the special agent position right now. Use hashtag FBI Live to send us questions about the special agent application and hiring process. So having a sense of humor, you know, knowing that we're going to occasionally make mistakes, course correct. Uh, what are some of the things or how is your expectations uh, different from when you actually entered on duty? Like I know you had expectations before you became mm -hmm. an agent. Mm -hmm. How did they line up to when you actually became an agent, when you were actually on the ground? Um, it's hard to imagine because what do you base it on? A couple interviews here or there that you talk to a couple agents or you go online and you do some reading or you watch some TV, TV programs. Shows. Absolutely. Um, for me, it was that when I got in, the career was much better than what I ever could have anticipated. Um, not only do I get to do good for a living, I get to work with phenomenal people, um, which makes the job that much more fun. But I also found that this organization, because it is so large, I mean, we're, we have over 30,000 people within this organization, hundreds of job opportunities, that when I wanted to um, grow myself personally, professionally, I was afforded those opportunities. Wow. If I wanted to try my, um, or develop my skills, or try a new field division, or um, new experience, all I had to do was volunteer, sign up for it, and I was afforded that opportunity of growth. So, I mean, you, I think you make a really awesome point in terms of you had so many opportunities for growth. A lot of our uh, audience here, they may be wondering, um, now that you're on board, in your experience, what do women bring to the table as special agents? Like, what's so amazing about women or female special agents at the FBI? Diversity. Um, imagine if we stayed back where Hoover was in 1972 where it was all male dominated. You're missing a whole cross section of the population and we should reflect what our population is. So it's not just women, it's diversity as a whole. Um, in order for us to be successful as an organization, we do have to reflect um, the population that we are asked to defend. And um, we can't work a case properly um, if we can't look at it from all different angles, all different backgrounds, and that takes diversity. I think you made some really awesome points. I wanna ask you about your career as a special agent. Um, you mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier, the fact that you are the unit chief I am. of I New am. Agents Training. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's an amazing experience. Um, it's a very humbling experience to be a part of helping these new agents achieve their goal of becoming FBI agents. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a labor of love as well. well you know, I manage or I see anywhere from 200 to over 600 individuals. So it's a huge amount of responsibility. I have a phenomenal team that I work with. Again, I get to work with great people mm -hmm. um, that we help mold and shape these, these new agents. So when they go out to their field offices, they are ready to hit the road running. So with that, and you're at this amazing position right now, the evolution of your career, you know, in that time, what was that like uh, when you got started and who pushed you? What was effectively the evolution of your career as a special agent? That's a good question. So I started off in Cincinnati where I was a new agent just for a couple years, and then we transitioned up to Anchorage. So that's really where I got the bulk of my experience. And I transitioned to a squad that I was the only female on that squad. And... Um, no matter where you go, no matter what position you hold within the Bureau, when you transition to a new unit or a new squad or a new field office, you have to prove yourself. Um, that's not a matter of me being a female, that's just a matter of you being a new employee in a new environment. They want to know that you can hold your own. And once I did that, um, these guys were the ones that supported me and encouraged me to take leadership positions. So I initially um, was the um, extended supervisor, basically. I supervised them for an extended period of time. And after that, they were the ones that said, you really need to look at becoming a permanent supervisor. So I ended up putting in for some positions, and that's when I transitioned down here to um, D.C. Did you ever feel limited at any point during your career at the FBI? Not at all. Again, um, as long as you are holding your own and you are doing the work that you should be doing at the level that you should be doing it, it doesn't matter what your gender or any of that is, um, there's, there's promotional and career enhancement opportunities for you. 
For those of you just joining us, thanks for tuning in. I'm Demelza from the FBI's Human Resources Division, and today we're talking with Special Agent Kelly Holland and what it's like being a female special agent. Remember to go to FBIjobs.gov to apply for the special agent position right now. Use hashtag FBI Live to send us questions about the special agent application and hiring process. You know, I want to talk to you about that for a second. I am a big believer in work-life balance. You know, Absolutely. I like knowing that I have some downtime. What is uh, what does work-life balance as an FBI special agent compare uh, to maybe your previous career experiences? Okay, um, I don't see that there is a difference. If you um, are in a career and you want to succeed at that career, you have to make sacrifices no matter what. And I found that as an FBI special agent, um, it is completely doable. I have two children and a husband who's a special agent, and. Our life is complete with the soccer games, the lacrosse games, the award ceremonies, the school plays. Again, it just takes um, some organizational skills and a, and a balance between our careers, like it would be if you have you know dual income, du dual career mm -hmm. um, families. So we talked a little bit before about your decision to become a special agent. You're leading up as Unit Chief New Agents Training down at Quantico. Let's talk about your career as a SA. So basically working in the field office, mm -hmm. um, what was that like working in the field office? And I specifically, I wanna know about your life in Anchorage. <laughs> it was amazing. It's a small community and an even smaller field office. It's mm -hmm. the smallest field office in the FBI. And um, we were a team. Again, we are thousands of miles away from DC or maybe help from the lower 48 as we call it um, when something happens. So. It was nice to know that because we worked as a team, when something happened, we could we could really rely on each other. And again, that was that was all of us just trusting each other and working together. To the ex excuse me, the extent that you can share, <clears throat> what was the coolest thing <laughs> that you've done as a special agent? Well, there have been a couple things. I'll narrow it down to two. One field office, since you wanted to focus on the field office a little bit. Um, I had the privilege and the opportunity of working a case that involved a cell. I won't tell you what field office, but um, again, collaborating and coordinating those efforts, not only internally within the FBI and headquarters, but also with our intelligence community partners was absolutely phenomenal. Um, second best, um, best memory uh, so far with working with the Bureau mm -hmm. is being on stage when the director administers the, um, the oath of office mm -hmm. to the new agents. It's very humbling and inspiring to know that you have been a very small part of molding them and helping them achieve their goal of becoming special agents. That's actually pretty awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> you know, and now we're going to take some questions from the audience. Uh, first, we've got a question from Elizabeth <coughs> on Facebook who asked, uh, if an applicant, uh, applicant's major in computer science, will they be restricted to desk work or will they have opportunities in the field? You know, Elizabeth, I've worked with plenty of computer scientists from a professional standpoint. Our computer scientists go out, uh, they join, I think, evidence response teams. They go out to interview victim companies with special agents. They are absolutely not chained to the desk at all. Has that been your experience? Um, even more so, computer scientists are someone that we are, it's a critical hiring need for us. So we have actually a lot of agents that come through as computer scientists and um, they end up as squad mates. So um, every crime just about that we work these days has some element of a computer involved in it. Mm. So um, if you have a computer science background, I would call you my co-case agent. <laughs> Uh, Eve from Twitter asks, I'm 39 years old and have been told that there's an age requirement mm -hmm. to work at the FBI. Is that true? That is absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. The only age requirement is for the special agent position. Right. Uh, in order to apply, it's between the ages of 23 and 36. And even then, if you're a federal 1811 or preference eligible yeah. veteran, you have some opportunities to apply uh, after that age range, and you can absolutely go to FBIjobs.gov special agents to check that out. Uh, but I know that from a professional staff standpoint, we actually bring in people across all age ranges. I've seen folks come in at their uh, you know, third, fourth, or fifth career move. They might be 50 or 60, they come to the FBI, they bring that skill, that talent, and that drive, that mission, yep. uh, for the mission to the FBI. And so at this time, we want to uh, 
ask a question from Taylor on Facebook. Uh, Taylor wants to know, can you give advice for the 20 weeks of FBI agent training? How can I be more prepared, including for the fitness test? Okay, so the biggest thing, Taylor, is you need to get out there and look at our website and make sure that you have reviewed what the protocol is. Um, for the physical fitness test. Um, I know that we are currently working on um, getting some more instruction and assistance out there on our website um, for you and for others that are training for the physical fitness test. The biggest thing is um, you have to be consistent with your workouts. Mm -hmm. If you're not consistent with your workouts, you're not gonna see the progress that you need. But in addition to that, being healthy and being fit is just not something that you do to get ready for a PFT, it is a lifestyle which means you also need to make sure that your diet and everything else is, is mirrored up with the, what you're doing physically. It's a way of life. And Brittany uh, asks, as someone applying to the Honors Internship Program, what training do you suggest for those aiming uh, to set themselves apart, to stand out, especially for young women? I'm trying to think. Um, for, if you're gonna be an Honors Intern, um, depending upon what your background is too, that really will help you. Um, I know that, again that we have critical hiring needs that will put people above um, when it comes to the hiring. Um, but at this point in time, when you get in to be an honors intern, do the best job that you can do because they look for referrals from those of us. I have an, I have an honors intern right now in my unit. and. Um, they look for us for those referrals and those recommendations um, when that honors internship comes to an end. Uh, Colleen asks, or excuse me, Colleen, hey Colleen asks, how is the transition from other positions in the FBI, like intelligence analyst positions, beneficial or not to becoming a special agent? I think any experience that you can get inside the FBI before you come to be a special agent is beneficial. So we do have a lot of, whether it's staff operations specialists or intelligence analysts who will then transition um, to become uh, special agents. And we have a lot of other professional staff, so staff positions as well. But um, yeah, any experience that you can get inside the FBI will will set you up for success as a special agent. Absolutely. Uh, and now it's time to wrap up. Thank you all for sharing your questions with us and many thanks to Kelly for sharing your experiences. Guys, keep in mind applications for our special agent position are open right now. So get your applications in. Learn more about the position by visiting FBIjobs.gov and don't forget to follow us here on Twitter on Facebook with the handle at uh, fbijobs.gov on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Happy holidays and we'll see you in January. Thanks guys, bye.